This episode of Stick Like Glue Radio is brought to you by Jim Palmer's Create Your Dream Business Now Academy, a one-of-a-kind live event where Jim will personally teach you how to market and grow a more profitable business faster, even in a crappy economy. During this event, Jim will crack the code and reveal how to create a million-dollar platform on a shoestring budget. You'll learn how to generate a ton of content with ease, and you'll also network with other successful marketers and entrepreneurs. This not-to-be-missed event is March the 13th through the 15th in Las Vegas and will quite literally transform your business. Do not miss it. Get all the details at www.stopwaitingacademy.com. www.stopwaitingacademy.com. Hi, I'm Bob Berg, co-author of The Go-Giver and author of Adversaries and Two Allies, and you're listening to Stick Like Glue Radio. Welcome to Stick Like Glue Radio, the only podcast dedicated to helping you create an everlasting bond with your customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more. Marketing and business building expert Jim Palmer, known internationally as the newsletter guru, is a serial entrepreneur, author, speaker, and coach to other entrepreneurs. Jim is the host of Newsletter Guru TV, a weekly web TV show featuring Jim's unique brand of smart marketing and business building advice. Check it out today at www.newsletterguru.tv. Please welcome your host of Stick Like Glue Radio, Jim Palmer. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to Stick Like Glue Radio. This is the only podcast dedicated to helping you create an everlasting bond with your customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more, and those are all great things in your business. I am your host, Jim Palmer, and I'm committed to helping you build a more profitable business faster. I'm really excited about this week's show because my special guest is none other than me. <laughs> so we're going to have a little fun turning the tables on, on your friendly host here for Stick Like Glue Radio. I am going to be interviewed uh, for my latest book, Stop Waiting For It To Get Easier, Create Your Dream Business Now. And I have selected a just an amazing entrepreneur to interview me this week. She is the founder of InterviewConnections.com, Jessica Rhodes. And Jessica's also my daughter. So without any further ado, Jessica, I'm going to turn over the host duties to you, honey. Well, thank you so much. I'm honored to interview you um, on Stick Like We Radio. You know, I've, I've been interviewed on other podcasts, and I work with a lot of podcasters, but this is my, um, well, one of my first times actually interviewing somebody else. So I, I definitely appreciate the opportunity. And um, also, you know, being somebody that you interviewed for your book, there's a chapter in there about my journey as a stay-at-home mom. Um, I'm also really excited about the opportunity to, you know, dive a little deeper into the book and um, hear some of the back stories. So, you know, my first question is, you know, something that I'm really curious about because, um, you know, I started my own business when I was pregnant. I, I have grown, you know, a profitable business under a year working from home with a 10-month-old. So for me, it's hard to imagine why any, you know, why people would not do that because <laughs> I've seen how exciting and how enjoyable it is. So, um, you know, Dad, after working with so many entrepreneurs and coaching so many small business owners, why, you know, what holds people back? Why don't more people do this? You know, Jessica, everybody's different. Um, everybody has a different threshold for um, tolerating risk and for fear and for all kinds of things, for the ability to get up and go to work early or to stay late or to juggle households and things like that. But, you know, you know, so I'm, I'm six years into, you know, coaching Six small, successful small business owners. One of the things that I've learned, and, and also, you know, I, I started reading um, autobiographies of business, um, successful business owners. I started in the late 70s, and, and so I've been kind of a student of, um, of business growth. And one of the things I think, and it could be many, many things, Jess, but one of the things I think it probably could describe it with one word is fear. And I think people have a fear um, – and it can take many kind of shapes and forms, but a fear of failure is probably the biggest one. So, you know, imagine somebody with a, um, imagine somebody like me having a, you know, a successful career going and, you know, a steady paycheck, direct deposit, vacation, health insurance, all that. And I'm going to like quit that and give it up to start my business. You know, at the time I started my business, I had four teenagers at home and, you know, as you know, um, your mom, my wife, was a stay-at-home mom, so I was the sole breadwinner. And so a lot of people face that and go, well, what if it doesn't work? They start playing the what-if game. 
Um, so it's a very gutsy move. I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of people that have ideas. There's a lot of people that have skill and talent um, that they can bring to the marketplace. But it is, a, it is a very risky proposition. If you look at it, if you look at the history of business, most businesses fail um, somewhere in the first year or maybe up to three years. And then somewhere up to five years, a, a smaller number will fail. If you make it to five years, you've got a pretty good shot at making it. But it is really, really hard. And, um, you know, it's like, I guess a, another question would be, why don't why doesn't everybody like going on these gigantic roller coasters where you go shooting down 100 miles an hour backwards and upside down? Well, it's not for everybody. And um, so I think the same thing for business because, as you know all too well, you know, starting your business with um, with uh, with Nathan, you know, the, the hours that you keep, I mean, your energy level for, for especially the lean years is, is really, really um, sapped, I would say. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I mean, that fear aspect is so true. And I mean, I've experienced that time and time again. It's, it's very scary growing a business, especially, um, you know, when you leave the security of a paycheck and, you know, you leave um, the security of, you know, health insurance benefits. You have to find out what you're going to do about that. I mean, it's scary, but I try to always focus on, um, you know, what's on the other side. Well, endless opportunity for making a lot of money. You know, I'm not capped out. I'm not waiting a whole year till I can make, you know, a dollar more in my paycheck per hour. It's just I could make more money now. So for me, I try to, um, you know, definitely focus on the opportunities. And, um, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs really focus on the lesson of, you know, fail hard and fail fast. So for me, whenever I have a failure, I say, great, <laughs> and I'm one step closer to my next success. So um, that's just a great answer. Now, that you're a little bit older than me, obviously, and I'm not saying you're old, but you've lived through a lot more decades than I have. So can you share with me and with the audience, what does history tell us, you know, through um, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s? You know, can you talk about some examples of businesses that, you know, either you've worked with or that you've studied that prove um, that it's the best time to start a business is now? The reason it's the best time to start a business right now because it's always the best time to start a business. Um, so a qu quick anecdote, which I put in the book, by the way. So it took me about five months to write this book. And, you know, I think I was in the proofing stage, getting in the last throes of it. And, and I came across this um, old Chinese proverb, and it said, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Um, and it's the same thing with a business. You know, if you look at all the successful major brands, major companies, millionaires and billionaires that we have heard of, you know, really famous business owners, they started, um, a lot of them started in recessionary or even depressionary times. There are many companies that started, you know, in um, in the Depression. Fortune magazine, which is a very popular business magazine, that started four months after the crash of 1929. Um, Revlon, which is a huge, you know, makeup chain, started in 1932. Burger King, Hyatt Hotels, the Muppets, they all started in the 50s. And then, you know, even going up into the 70s, kind of when I started working, um, I remember there was gas lines and major oil shortages and things like that. And that's when a guy named Fred Smith started Federal Express. And so there really isn't a bad time um, to start a business. And I would also probably argue that if you offer a service to businesses, in other words, there's kind of in, in broad, broad brush strokes, there's two kind of business, business to consumer, which is B2C, and business to business, which is B2B. So if, if you provide a service to businesses, and you know, you, you therefore uh, your clients are business owners, you, could, you stand a chance of doing well in hard times um, more than even easy times. And the reason I say that is when, when money is flowing and the economy is roaring and entrepreneurs, small business owners are doing well, you know, in a, in a real strong economy, you can, even, you can even not be at the top of your game and do well, you know, if, if the economy is real strong. And so people are less likely to need help or look, uh, look other places to improve their business. However, when times are bad, um, that's when they're actually looking for help. And so people think, well, they don't have any money. Well, that's, that, may tr that may be true and it may not be true. You know, people find money when they have a need and, and when they think that there's an opportunity to improve themselves. You know, somebody say, well, I can't afford that. And then all of a sudden they go, well, I'll, I, you know, I got, a, I got another credit card. I'll get a loan or I'll do this or that or the other thing. So 
when when the economy is not in its strongest shape is actually there's a lot of opportunities to start a business and I think I think that actually helps people gut it out a little bit during the lean years when the economy is tough because you're already in that kind of mindset where you're going to bootstrap it a little bit and then when you do get going and the economy turns around because it always does man you you can take off like a rocket ship. That's so true. And um, you know I'm going to I'm going to ask you another question here, kind of a, a follow up to that. I mean. You know, we all know that you're the newsletter guru, and uh, your um, kind of main platform is No Hassle Newsletters. Can you give us an example how um, how you market newsletters as a way for businesses to, you know, to grow their profits? Yeah, one of the things I talk about, you know, I go out and do a lot of speaking, and I don't, I don't necessarily say come learn about newsletters. When I when I my talks are usually, you know, the the power of retention. Um, and you know the magic of newsletter marketing is how a lot of talks are are, are labeled. But see, nobody really wants to have a newsletter. Uh, what people really want is they want higher profits. Higher profits come from stronger relationships with your customers, clients, or patients. When a business has stronger relationships, you know, again, whether it's customers, clients, or patients, they will end up usually staying longer, staying connected to that business longer. They'll end up spending more, either just more repeat business or buying more of the various goods and services that that business offers. And they're also, when there's a stronger relationship, they're also much more likely to refer new people. So the goal the goal for most most business owners is higher profits. I, I contend that the best way to do that and the fastest way to do that is through higher retention. So it just so happens that a customer newsletter is one of the best, if not the best, client retention tool available. So it's kind of you see how I just, you just have to flip it around a little yep. bit, you know, because yep. you have people want what they want and they don't necessarily know the best way to do it. So if I just said, hey, you got to have a newsletter, well, I don't necessarily want a newsletter. Yeah, but you want higher profits, you want to sell more repeat right. business, and you want to do things like that. So right, the that's, reason that's I, how I do that. The reason I wanted to ask that question is because, you know, if we've got listeners out there who, um, you know, maybe are thinking about starting a business or in the early stages and trying to figure out how to market their service or market their products, I wanted to, I wanted you to really um, outline how you market newsletter newsletters because you're right. I mean, print and mail newsletters are not the sexiest product on the market, but, you know, what is sexy is making a lot of money and having a lot of clients to do with you. So um, I just think it's a great uh, example of a lesson of how you can um, just show your clients and your prospects, you know, what the end goal could be by using your service. So, uh, so thanks that, for giving so, that example. No, you're welcome. And so that's an example of um, kind of how I, I, you know, that's probably a better example of or an answer to a question like how do I position them? You know, if, if you wanted to right. know how do I market my services, I do that a number of ways. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have a, a phrase that, you know, I, I've, I've created a million-dollar platform on a shoestring budget. And what that means is I have built a platform for myself and my business, my brand. Um, and that, that platform, being a million-dollar platform, consists of many, many different pieces or parts, however you want to look at it. So, for example, there's video, there's podcasting, there's, you know, email, there's email newsletters, uh, there's blogging, all forms of social media, um, authoring a book, going out and speaking, doing interviews, all these different things um, are how somebody, an entrepreneur, a small business owner would build a million-dollar platform. When you have a million-dollar platform, that keeps you above above the crowd so to speak it allows you to stand out it has people seeing who you are and it has them understanding what you do and what you offer and you know the reason you, you nobody can do just one thing in fact I I was doing an interview uh, yesterday and this is a very typical question someone said well Jim if if somebody wanted to do just one thing to improve their business what would it be it's kind of it's an it's it's a it's a common question, but it's also not necessarily a, a great question in all fairness because there isn't just one thing. And the reason I do so many different things in, in what I call my platform is because people consume information in many different ways. Um, right. You know, for example, if you like to read books, you know, I like to hold books. I, I do, you know, have a lot of books on Kindle. I know you prefer a Kindle. Um, some people like to consume podcasts. 
um, on their phone or MP3 player or whatever, either in the car or maybe when they're out running, something like that. Some people prefer to watch videos. Some people like to read um, online, like to read email newsletters. Uh, there's so there's, And some people are just really connected with social media. Some people, a little bit of all of it. So you have to, you have to be able to connect with as many of your prospective clients and as, as possible, and that's where the million-dollar platform comes in. Right, and I read, uh, you know, recently in one of Dan Kennedy's books, and I know you teach this all the time. I'm sure you've gotten it from Dan, but you know, the ability to take massive action is just what you're describing is implementing um, many of these techniques, all these techniques at once and not just saying, I'm going to start a podcast and focus on that for a few months and then maybe I'll start a blog. It's doing them all at once and that is how you can position yourself as a very successful person, as a successful entrepreneur. And, you know, leading in, into my next question, um, you know, you're always talking about small business owners and entrepreneurs, and I know that you're an entrepreneur, but why also mention small business owners? Aren't they the same? You know, what is the difference? Well, it's a good question, and I do usually say entrepreneurs and small business owners, so I, I happen to think they are different in most cases. However, it's, you could also be a small business owner with an entrepreneurial mindset, and I think that's really the difference just between an entrepreneur and a small business owner. It is one of mindset. Uh, one example I give a lot is if you own a jewelry store, uh, you know, an actual storefront like an old shopping center or something, and so obviously you have glass cases full of jewelry, watches, you know, necklaces, rings, whatever, and you build your business up and maybe even through some great marketing and customer retention strategies, maybe a newsletter. You know, let's say you build up a really successful jewelry store. If you're a small business owner who owns that jewelry store and you kind of max out, in other words, in your location, you can't fit any more glass showcases. The ones you have are so packed, you, you can't really handle any more business. Your next thinking, the way you're going to think about how am I now going to grow this business is to open a second location then maybe a third, and on growing that way. So that's how a small business owner thinks. How can I sell more of whatever my, you know, my current product or service is? An entrepreneur um, thinks more about wealth creation. In other words, how many different ways can I generate revenue to build wealth for myself? So to create financial freedom, financial stability for my, for my, my family, my business, and things like that. So when you're an entrepreneur, if let's say – Let's stay with the same example. So let's say the uh, small business jewelry store owner um, is an entrepreneur, has an entrepreneurial mindset, and he's kind of maxing out his business. One of the things I'll bet that has happened if he is really great at marketing and therefore has a great business is he's probably one of the one of the few entrep one of the few uh, jewelry store owners in the country that's doing really well, or he's probably in the you know the old top one or two percent of those jewelry stores. Do you know what I mean? So when he goes to conferences or seminars or things like that, people are like, well, how are you doing that? So, you know, he could either tell them and t take them to lunch and share his stuff, or, you know, he could also create a, a coaching program, a mentoring group, start a mastermind. He could write a book, how, you know, how to take your jewelry store, you know, to the million dollar mark in less than two years. Or there's a, and he could start giving speeches. He could write articles and contribute them to the trade magazines. He could create information products. Um, so people could buy those online. In other words, he could do, he could create multiple streams of revenue while he still has his main business, which is the jewelry store. And mm -hmm. so that's one example. Just to, if you want to look at my own business, and which is kind of parallels that story I just told. So you know, I have my core business, which is No Hassle Newsletters. But then I also created No Hassle Social Media. I created uh, my print program, and we print tons of newsletters a month now. I created uh, my infographics program, uh, my coaching program. You know, I, I do sell books. I have a number of training programs that I sell. Um, Success Advantage Publishing, publish all my books and all my programs. So I have multiple streams of revenue so that my income and my, my financial security is not tied to just one business. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the way um, that I describe it. It's, it's really one of mindset. Right. It, it absolutely is. And I want to um, kind of tell the listeners a story because, um, you know, about the importance of, of working with a coach because, you know, you're my business coach, started, 
you know, you coached me right from the, the get-go of starting my um, virtual assistant business, and um, I've heard you tell the story multiple times of, um, you know, when you for your first business that you started, Dynamic Communication, you were writing and designing newsletters for individual clients, and every time you finish one, you go out and find an, an, a new client, and, um, you know, you always talk about how mom said, you know, when are we going to go on vacation? What was it, five years or so? Or it was it about was four years into the business, yep. Right, and, and, and that really hit you, and you realized you had to restructure the business um, to make it so you could have it run without you. And I would, I would almost argue that that is maybe where you made your entrepreneur um, shift because you realized you had to create a platform that was not just you working, you know, hourly. And I kind of and, – and because you're my coach and because I heard that story, I made that shift just a couple of months into my business, not four years, because I was able to learn. I was – I started my business as a virtual assistant, and I had clients. I still do have clients that I work hourly for. But when I realized that I was on vacation this summer and I was still – even though I was – Working at the beach house, I was still working just as much as I was. I just had to say, oh, well, it's great that I'm working at the beach, but I was still working a lot. I said, I really need to make my business work so that I can have it run without me. And that's where I kind of had the light bulb moment of I don't want to wait four years like Dad had to. I'm going to learn from his um, <laughs> mistake, I guess. because, And that's just really the, the point of the story is that because I had a business coach, because I – you know, had you as my business coach, and I could learn your story, I was able to um, really take, you know, take these big leaps and bounds and steps forward that I wouldn't have if I didn't. So, you know, if people don't have a business coach, I think it's so important. And, you know, I will gladly make the plug that you're a fantastic business coach, and I've made so many strides in my business because I have learned your story, and I have, you know, learned from the mistakes you've made. So, I um, just well, want to put that great. out there. No, that's great. But, and let me tell the story about how your second business came about because I think it's pretty mm -hmm. fun. And this is also, um, you know, it's also a, a, a really highlighting the benefit of a coach, whether it's me or right. anybody else. When you, you, most of us as business owners are too close to our own business. And I, I work with coaches. So um, mm -hmm. you and I, uh, Mom and I were up, up at your place and visiting mm -hmm. you guys and Nathan and um you and I took Nathan for a walk down by the water, and I was asking about your business, and um, I, I think I remember asking you two questions. I said, what do you enjoy most, and where do you, where, what do you think is the most profitable? And you said you enjoy getting people interviews, um, finding them interviews with you know, podcasts and Internet radio shows. And, and I said, what do you think is the most profitable? And it, sometimes it's a different answer, but if it's the same, it's a home run. And you said, well, that's the most profitable because I'm good mm -hmm. at it, I'm quick, and things like that. And I think um, one of us had our smartphone, and we started chatting around back and forth. I think about five minutes later, one of us was on GoDaddy, and we secured the domain, interviewconnections.com. And um, mm -hmm. that really was the start of your second business, branding it as a second business, and that's really where most of your growth is today. And so it really is um, an eye-opening experience when you can work with somebody who's kind of been there and done that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I would not have been able to come to that conclusion um, at all or definitely not as quick as if I had. So, I mean, really what a coach can do is just ask you the right questions and help see things because in my own head – you know, you kind of see what's happening right now in your business and you say, well, what's happening right now is the reality and that's just how it has to be because that's how I'm making money. But a coach can ask you the right questions and kind of show you what it could be. And because you asked me those questions of what do you enjoy most and what's the most profitable, because they were the same, I just needed you to point that out and then help me take the action steps. And, I mean, that has more than doubled um, my business revenue each month. So, I mean, it was a home run, and it's totally worth the investment of working with a coach. So let's move on to um, a question, a fun question. Um, you know, you secured uh, somebody to write the forward to your book, and um, – it's somebody who was an investor on Shark Tank, and we're both obsessed with that show. It's like, mm -hmm. as a mom who's definitely home on Friday nights, that's like the highlight of my Friday night is watching Shark <laughs> Tank. So, um, how the heck did you sec secure Kevin Harrington to write the forward? That is so cool. Well, it's a it's a cool little story, and there's there's several little poignant nuggets um, to to pick out and 
in case they're not obvious or somebody's driving and not 100% listening to this with, a, with an, an attentive ear, I'll, I'll point them out. So, you know, as, as you said, we're both major fans of Shark Tank. I watched it from day one. Um, Kevin Harrington was on the first two seasons. He was very big into infomercials. He was one of the pioneers of, um, you know, these infomercials. He started in the 80s. He actually was in the Philadelphia area at the time. And I remember when um, – he invested. He he invested in one of the entrepreneurs. I, I couldn't remember her name at the moment, Jess, but she developed City Kitty, which was how to teach your cat how to go into the toilet so you don't have to have all the um, kitty litter in, in an apartment like New York City or something. And um, I thought that was pretty cool. So I heard him on this interview, and um, so I then sent him an email, not knowing if he'd get it, if he had an assistant who screened it or anything, and I said, hey, Kevin, you know, I'm a big fan of the Shark Tank, and I, I referenced the City Kitty thing just to uh, make the – so he didn't think it was just BS that I said I like Shark Tank. And um, I said uh, – anyway, so so step one, so here's nugget one. I took the shot because you're right. I could have said, well, who is he? Why would he – you know, because my goal, when I started writing my book in April of 2013, this is now July or August, so I'm almost done writing the book. And I had set an intention for myself, a deliberate intention, that I want to have the biggest celebrity I could outside of my normal you know, circles that I kind of travel, operate in. I want to have a biggest celebrity as possible endorse my book. And so I just kept thinking about it and putting it out there. And so uh, Kevin – so that's point one. I took the shot. Point number two is I'm not one of these – I almost said knuckleheads, but that would be rude. So let me change that. I'm not one of these entrepreneurs who uses Yahoo or Hotmail. You've got to have a real email. So I sent him an email from jim at the newsletterguru.com. That's nugget number two. Uh, it just looks unprofessional the other way. So if you disagree, that's, that's too bad, but that's just reality. And nugget number three, as you know, if you get an email from me, I have a, a – picture, an image signature at the bottom that includes my, my signature, but also includes my picture. It shows me with my five books. Um, it, you, it has a picture underneath right now promoting the Vegas event, but I switched that out. So when he got the email, he was able not just to see you know uh, my name in, in, in a font. He saw me. He went to my website, started checking me out. So he emailed me back you know, about three, four hours later and said, hey, looks like you got some neat things going on. I'd, I would love to connect with you. And next thing I know, we were on the phone together. We talked for about 45 minutes. And I said, um, hey, Kevin, I'm you know writing my fifth book, and it would be a real honor if you would consider writing the forward. And he said, well, send me the manuscript. And about two days after that, he said, I love the message of your book. I'm, he's so, I'm so into entrepreneurs and small business owners. And I, he said, not only do I want to be part of it, I, I want to um, really help promote it. So that's how that happened. So, again, nugget number one, I took the shot. Nugget number two, have a real email, have a signature image in your email, and, and then follow up. That's great. That's And honestly, people could take those nuggets, those tips there, um, and apply it to any goal that they want to achieve. I mean, I talk, you know, I work with entrepreneurs seeking exposure on podcast interviews and how to get yourself out there on different podcasts. And it's really, those tips right there are very applicable to that too. You know, if you want to um, get yourself seen, just follow those, you know, tips and it, it will work. It's not that hard. Um, so let's, I guess finish out here. We're probably towards the end of the interview, and I want to jump to the Vegas event um, because I'm really excited about it. I'll be speaking there about the media exposure and the podcast interviews that I help you get. Um, and I, I'd really just like so many people to come to this and benefit from your coaching just like I have. So can you tell us more about the Stop Waiting Academy? Yeah, it really is. A, it's so exciting, Jess, because it really came out of the book. So a lot of people were reading the book and making comments. They wanted to learn more, um, you know, talking about my platform and all the different marketing I do. And how do I, you know, okay, I'd really like to have a dream business. How do I do that? And so talk about coaches again. I got sharing this with, you know, a couple mentors of mine. One of them said, you want to do an event. you got to do a live event. And I'm like, eh, I'm not so sure. Live events are – it's getting harder to fill them and get people there. And I just – I'm busy, and I had all these reasons and excuses. And he really <laughs> challenged me. He said, if you come up with, a, with a, a different type of event, in other words, not one where you go and you're sitting in a 60-degree chilled room and have every hour a different speaker get up, give you 10 minutes' worth of content, and do a 45-minute pitch for their program. If you do something different, 
he says, I think you'll do really well. He said, and he's been following me for a long time. He says, I think you've built a really good reputation, somebody who provides a lot of value. And so I put it out there. So the first thing I did, I know we'll go, we'll go over a little bit, but I think this is important. Um, the first thing I did, and, and it's one of the things I teach, you've got to make sure there's a need for what you want to offer before you go out and build the thing, right? So I sent a survey to my list and I got 108 people responded that says, yes. There was a lot of questions, but says, yes, we want to come to this. And so I knew I had some interest, so then I just build the event. And what I'm doing is uh, it is March 13th, 14th, and 15th in Las Vegas. It's a two-day seminar with an optional extra third day, which is going to be an actual face-to-face -face mastermind with me and, and some other entrepreneurs. So everybody gets a chance to have their business kind of looked at and get some ideas. Um, but one of the things I'm going to do, I not only want to inform and educate, but I want to inspire people to take action because I've been to so many seminars in my life where you, you learn something and then you go, uh, I'm not sure I can do that. So, for example, when I do uh, one, of the, one of the modules for my, for the, how do I teach people how to do a million dollar platform will be video. So, you know, a lot of people are familiar with video, but I'm going to show them the exact formula I use, what I do. This is my camera. This is my microphone. This is my tripod. This is how, um, you know, I'm just going to describe the whole thing and why they should do it, where they should put it. And then, Jess, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to open up my camera, turn it on, and I'm going to shoot an episode of Newsletter Guru TV right in front of everybody. I'm going to upload it to my YouTube channel, and I'll do it all in probably 35 to 40 minutes because I don't want anybody having an excuse like, I don't have time to do it. So um, that's just one example of how this is going to be different. So you're going to learn, you're going to be informed and educated, but you're also going to be inspired because I'm actually going to show you how easy it is to do some of this stuff. That's awesome. And I, you know, like I said, I can't wait to be there. I can't wait to experience it. And, um, you know, I'm approaching my one-year mark as a full-time entrepreneur, and I've been to two live events so far. Um, they're both pretty different, but they were big events, lots of speakers, you know, huge keynote sessions, and, and they were great. Don't get me wrong. I love going to live events, but it's a little overwhelming. There's a lot of things going on. Um, you know, people, the people that aren't as confident kind of just kind of sit there and listen. So I know this is going to be totally different where people are actually going to walk away with the knowledge they need to go back and implement. So I would definitely encourage um, everyone to go because it's really going to rock your world. So, and, you know, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say the, the final thing and then, then we'll have to um, get going here is um, the other different thing about it is it's limited to 50 people. Um, so I've rented a small room in a hotel that has no expansion. I did that intentionally, and I should tell you, one of the other coaches that are, or mentors that I have kind of chastised me, said, Jim, for what you're teaching, you could double or triple the size of the room and still fill it. I didn't want to do that because mm -hmm. I wanted to be in a very small little environment where I can connect with everybody there for two days and not just be speaking to a major audience. I wanted to really have this be a wonderful experience for um, you know, a very, very small group. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to sit in the host seat of Stick Like Glue Radio. I really enjoyed this opportunity to ask you these questions and, um, you know, help your audience learn more about the book and about the event. And, um, you know, how can people learn, you know, if they haven't connected with you yet elsewhere, how can they learn more about you and how can they learn more about the event? Um, stick uh – www.thenewsletterguru.com is kind of my home base. That's where um, you, you can see my blog. You get links to the TV show, links to the podcast, my books, my courses. Um, there's a link there for the Vegas event, but if you want to check that out directly, it's stopwaitingacademy.com, www.stopwaitingacademy.com. Great, and I'll turn the host duties back over to you. Awesome. Hey, great job, by the way. You got, you're a natural. I, I predict uh, one of the next things I'll be coaching you to do is to start your own, your own podcast up there. So. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, all right, folks. Hey, that wraps up this very special episode of Stick Like Glue Radio with um, the super talented host, Jessica Rhodes, and the um, – well, let's let's take the polls. I think yes, an amazing guest, Jim Palmer, and Stick Like Glue Radio is the only podcast dedicated to helping you create an everlasting bond with your customers, so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more. Again, I am Jim Palmer. I am committed to helping you build a more profitable business faster. Watch for another great episode of Stick Like Glue Radio next week, and until then, keep taking action, keep moving forward, and don't ever, ever, ever give up. Now go out there and do something nice for somebody today. Take care, everybody. 
You've been listening to Stick Like Glue Radio, the only podcast dedicated to helping you create an everlasting bond with your customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more. Stick Like Glue Radio features Jim Palmer's unique brand of smart marketing and business building advice for action-oriented entrepreneurs. To make sure you don't miss a single profit-boosting show, subscribe to this podcast at www.getjimpalmer.com. If you know other entrepreneurs looking for the fastest way to hire profits in their business, please tell them about the Stick Like Glue radio podcast. Now go and implement what you've learned and boost your profits. See you next week for more Stick Like Glue radio.